So a few of you may have mentioned Polygon one or two times. So let's talk about it. When you create a new NFT collection on OpenSea, you have the option to create and store your NFTs on either Ethereum or on Polygon. This is a big decision, and making the wrong one could doom your NFT collection before you even start. No pressure. I'm April and Alter, and in this video, we'll explore the difference between Polygon and Ethereum on OpenSea. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped with all the information you need to make an informed decision about whether Ethereum or Polygon is right for you. First, we'll explore what the heck Ethereum and Polygon even are. Next, we'll dive into the pros and cons of each on OpenSea. And finally, we'll wrap up with a case study to give you a better idea of how to make a decision on which option is right for you. As always, that's a lot of information to fit into a short period of time, so let's get into it. First up, what even are Ethereum and Polygon? Let's start with Ethereum. Ethereum is a blockchain. On a very basic level, when an NFT is minted or created, it gets stored onto a blockchain. I have some other videos that go more into detail about what NFTs actually are, so check those out if you need a little refresher. So NFTs get minted onto a blockchain, and the most common blockchain used for this purpose is Ethereum. Every time a transaction happens on the Ethereum blockchain, such as an NFT being minted or purchased, that transaction must be approved. Approving a transaction takes energy, and if you use the Ethereum blockchain, you pay for this energy through a mechanism called gas. The cost of gas, or gas fee, fluctuates with demand. So the higher the demand, the higher the gas fee. And because Ethereum doesn't currently have a great solution to congestion, or a high number of transactions being submitted at the exact same time, transactions on Ethereum tend to be slow and expensive. And that's where Polygon comes in. Think of Polygon almost like an add-on to the Ethereum blockchain. So we know that Ethereum is struggling with congested, slow, expensive scaling. Polygon helps solve this problem through the use of sidechains. So instead of increasing the capacity on the blocks of the original Ethereum blockchain, Polygon uses its own blocks to help distribute the load. So we have the main chain, Ethereum, and the side chain, Polygon. And these two chains are separate, but there's something called a bridge that connects them. The bridge can convert assets from one chain to the other by locking up the assets on one side while unlocking them on the other. There is a whole lot less congestion on the Polygon side chain, and some other infrastructure is also in place to make transactions faster and cheaper. So that's a very, very basic overview of the difference between Ethereum and Polygon as blockchains. Now, let's get into how they're treated differently in OpenSea. So you're on OpenSea and you're excited to create your NFT collection, but then you're hit with a choice. What blockchain do you use, Ethereum or Polygon? Let's explore some of the main differences. We'll start with the biggie, gas fees. There are a whole host of gas fees associated with using Ethereum on OpenSea. These fees are separated into one-time fees and recurring fees. There are two one-time fees associated with Ethereum. The first is an initialization fee. When you first decide to sell an NFT on Ethereum on OpenSea, you need to pay a one-time initialization fee to get your account set up and ready to go. The exact price of this fee does fluctuate depending on what the gas prices are at that time. When I did it, gas was relatively low at around 60 guay, and I still had to pay around $125 for this initialization fee. The second one-time fee in Ethereum is an auction approval fee. If you want to auction off an NFT, as opposed to just listing it for a fixed price, you first need to approve the use of a special token called WETH. WETH? WETH? I honestly have no idea to pronounce it. This stands for wrapped ETH, and it's worth exactly the same as ETH. You can exchange ETH for WETH on OpenSea, and you must use WETH to buy and sell on OpenSea auctions. And after you approve for WETH, to be used once, you don't have to pay for that approval ever again. So those are the two one-time fees associated with using Ethereum on OpenSea. But unfortunately, they just scratch the surface on the gas fees associated with Ethereum. There are a whole host of recurring fees, or gas fees that occur every time you accept an auction offer, transfer or gift an NFT to someone, buy an NFT, cancel a listed NFT, cancel a bid, convert WEATH to ETH and vice versa, and freezing your metadata. I'll probably make another video at some point later of more of an in-depth analysis of Ethereum gas fees on OpenSea, but for the time being, just let it be known that there are many occurrences of needing to pay gas, and gas is not cheap. As a reference, gas usually costs between $50 and $200 per transaction. So those are the fees associated with using Ethereum, but what about Polygon? There are no gas fees directly associated with using Polygon on OpenSea. Seriously. 
I know. But in order to buy an NFT on the Polygon blockchain, you still need to indirectly pay gas. Let me explain. So when you look at an NFT listed on the Polygon blockchain, you can see that it could be purchased with ETH. But on OpenSea, there are two kinds of ETH, Ethereum ETH and Polygon ETH. NFTs on the Polygon blockchain can only be purchased using Polygon ETH. In order to get Polygon ETH, you have to bridge Ethereum ETH over to Polygon. You can bridge Ethereum ETH over to Polygon ETH directly on OpenSea, but this transaction does require a gas fee. So yes, technically there is a gas fee associated with using Polygon, but this is just a tiny fraction of the gas fees required when using Ethereum. Obviously, this sounds great. Why wouldn't you want to pay less gas fees? Let's get into some of the trade-offs of using Polygon. One cool feature on OpenSea is the ability to auction NFTs. So instead of selling an NFT for a fixed price, you can just auction it off to the highest bidder. You can even set a minimum bid, ensuring that the offers you receive are above a certain price. This auction feature, however, is only available in Ethereum. Apparently, it is in the OpenSea pipeline to offer the auction support for Polygon in the future, but who knows how long that would take. Additionally, one of the main concerns about Polygon is that it is less secure than Ethereum. I'm not saying that it's completely unsafe and that all of your assets are destined to be lost, but objectively, it is just less secure than Ethereum. So if you do choose Polygon, you just have to have a little extra trust that Polygon will not lose your NFTs and your funds. The final drawback to Polygon is that people in general tend to be much less familiar with Polygon than they are with Ethereum. Most people interested in buying an NFT have likely heard of Ethereum before, but a large majority of them have never even heard of Polygon. So if part of your NFT audience is comprised of people who are not experts in the NFT world, using Polygon can create some extra friction in getting them to buy your NFTs. In order to purchase an NFT using Polygon, a buyer does need to take a couple extra steps. First, they need to configure Matic Network onto their crypto wallet. This can be a little bit daunting for someone who isn't super technical. Next, they have to bridge their Ethereum ETH over to Polygon ETH in OpenSea. As mentioned before, they will need to pay a gas fee for this bridge. Buyers who aren't too familiar with NFTs may feel like this process is too complex and then just give up before they even buy your NFTs. There are also a lot of crypto scams out there and people could could feel uncomfortable bridging their Ethereum ETH over to Polygon ETH for fear of losing their ETH. So if you do decide to use Polygon for your next NFT project, be sure to provide some step-by-step -step documentation on how to buy an NFT using Polygon and be prepared to answer lots of questions from people who are not too familiar about the process. So Polygon is great for avoiding gas fees, but it doesn't support auctions, it is less secure, and it does create more friction for your potential buyers. Polygon is a great blockchain to use for high frequency, low value transactions. But if your NFT collection involves a fewer number of high value transactions, it could merit paying a premium in gas fees in order to ensure the maximum security of being on the Ethereum blockchain. So now that we understand the difference between and the use cases for Ethereum and Polygon, let's examine a case study to see a real world application of this information. The NFT project we'll be examining for this case study is Zoniaverse. Huge thank you to Zoniaverse for sponsoring this portion of the video. Guys, I got a sponsorship. So I'm going to give you some information about the Zoniaverse NFT project. See if you can guess if they ended up using Ethereum or Polygon for their project. The answer, as well as the thought process behind it, will be revealed at the end. So Zoniaverse is a 10,000 item generative NFT project revolving around a race to a planet called Zonia. Each NFT in the collection, called a Zonian, is comprised of four random components, regions, drivers, ships, and propulsions. Different attributes resolve in different speeds, and these speeds determine the Zonian's race performance. So after 1% or 100 of the Zonians have been purchased, they can start racing. Each Zonian can race once per day against another Zonian, and the chances of winning this race is determined by the total speed of the NFT. As you win races, you'll climb up on the monthly public leaderboard. And at the end of every month, the leaders of the leaderboard will be awarded a monetary prize based on the percentage of the Zonians sold at that time. So the more Zonians sold, the larger the prize. There will also be Zonian giveaways at certain milestones. Transparency is absolutely prioritized at Zoniaverse. These giveaways will be publicly streamed and the monthly leaderboards will always be publicly available. The presale will begin on December 18th when you can mint a Zonian for 0.06 ETH. Depending on your level in the Discord at that time, you could mint for 0.05 ETH or 0.04 ETH and even receive a free Zonian instead. 
The price of these onions will increase in the public sale on December 26th and will increase one more time to the final sale price of 0.08 ETH on January 1st. January 1st is also the day when all of the zonians will be revealed, letting the buyers know how rare and how fast of a zonian they have. All NFT prices are set as fixed prices from the very beginning. Transparency is crucial to Zoniaverse. They don't want ambiguous listing prices that can change based off of hype. Zoniaverse is an out-of-pocket debut project by six Venezuelan family members inspired by space exploration. Coming from the hardships of Venezuela, they designed a roadmap with a focus on giving back to South America, Africa, and of course, the Zonian holders. They also have very strong technical talent behind the project, enabling them to provide 24-7 support to any potential issues that the Zonian buyers may encounter. Honestly, and I'm speaking from the heart here, not just because they sponsored this video, Zoniaverse is one of the coolest NFT projects that I have ever seen. The team has more passion than I've ever encountered before, and the idea of turning Zonian profits back to the Zonian holders through daily races is just genius. Their roadmap is insane, and I would encourage everyone at the very least just to check out their Discord channel and experience this incredible community. The links to do so if you're interested will be in the video description. So based on all of that, did Zoniaverse choose Polygon or Ethereum? What do you think? And the answer is... Polygon! With a collection of 10,000 items, Zoniaverse will have a high frequency of transactions. Polygon is better fit for high frequency transactions, while Ethereum is better for low frequency transactions. Zonia NFT prices start at 0.04 ETH and end at 0.08 ETH, which is still relatively low value. Polygon is a better fit for low value transactions, while Ethereum is better for high value transactions. And because Zoniaverse is listing everything for a fixed price and not at auction, they're unbothered by the fact that OpenSea does not support auctions through Polygon. As Zoniaverse is an out-of-pocket debut project, the team does not have tens of thousands of dollars to shell out to pay a premium for Ethereum security. They're confident with Polygon's existing security measures, and they prioritize the buyer's ability to not have to pay any gas fees over the tiny possibility of losing everything on Polygon. And finally, with their strong technical side providing 24-7 support, they have the capability to walk any potentially confused buyer through the process of buying an NFT through Polygon on OpenSea. So for this particular project, Polygon is a clear choice. I will say that although Polygon is probably a better choice for most projects right now, that could be changing soon. A huge update to Ethereum called Ethereum 2.0 is coming at some point in the next year. This update will make transactions on Ethereum both faster and cheaper, along with a whole host of other neat improvements. If you're exploring options for your very first NFT project, I would highly recommend checking out this video just to ensure that NFTs are actually right for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.